I was wrong in doing what I did. No, 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 no. Are you listening? I don't care about fucking money. I know how to live without money. It's nothing new to me. Sean here, and before we begin, I want to tell a quick story. I was in Slash's stream last night. There's a physical therapy place here for people who work during the day, and they're open till 10 o'clock p.m. I'm having my left leg tweaked and turned, and I'm laughing hysterically. He keeps asking me what I'm laughing at. So I said, okay, Chris, and I started playing it really loud. Well, really loud, relatively. For us, really loud. And I put this in the chat. The very first question was, is this real? And I just started laughing, and he started laughing. I suggested his username be Crooked Dink. But I'm not sure. If he's like me, he'll just use his real name because we just don't give a fuck. So if he joins the community, I will embarrassingly point him out in one of the live chats. He is now a Lornographer. I finished my narcissism video and sociopath video. I have not edited it yet, but I hope to have it done at some point today. Today we are going to be discussing what it would be like if Casey, C-A-S-3-Y, would have actually shown up at his trailer. And then we're gonna talk about what would have happened if Lauren showed up in California. The first problem that presents itself is that Casey is an actress. I have some experience with acting. My daughter was in an independent movie. She's the little girl in the National Kroger Halloween commercial. And she's also the little girl that turns into a nurse in the Galen College of Nursing commercial. Her shoot was late at night because the store had to be prepared. It closed early. But I remember about two o'clock in the morning, she's looking at me and she's trying not to cry and she's like slumped over, Daddy, I can't keep my eyes open. So I had to deal with that, but I, but I saw, I had a good look. They still kept the parents. They were there till like six in the morning. If you see the commercial, it's, it's one that they sometimes replay every year. They look like Modern Family. They were cast to look like the cast from Modern Family. I was in an independent movie, she was in an independent movie, and I remember the hours were grueling for the adults. And so I'm thinking to myself, Casey's an actress. She's around actors and actresses all of the time, directors, powerful people, and Lauren is an unrepentant alcoholic pedophile and a broken down trailer. Now let's say Casey did come out, first in Lauren's trailer. I don't think it's going to work out, and I, don't, I think she's going to realize it's not going to work out within the first month, because Lauren, he won't keep a job, or he can't keep a job, and he definitely would not keep a job if she was an actress, not because of the money. That's not the, the main issue. The main issue is that he's going to want to be at her side every second of every day at every shoot, every photo shoot. Every film shoot, he's going to want to be there. His paranoia is going to be off the charts. Imagine what would happen if Casey was supposed to do a love scene. We know how he is. He's going to be telling her how to kiss the guy, where his hands can go, where her hands can go, what kind of positions they can be in. They're going to get in a screaming match because he's going to do everything in his power to discourage her. We know in Hollywood there are a lot of good-looking people because good-looking people sell tickets. Lauren re will refuse to be remaining in the trailer. He'll refuse to remain in the trailer. He's going to want to be on that set, even though most of the time there's a love scene, there's a closed set. Too many people gawking generally spoils the mood and the actors and actresses, if they have to be nude, it's going to make them uncomfortable. So I ask you this, how uncomfortable are the directors and the lighting guys and the sound guys going to be when this unrepentant alcoholic pedophile fights his way onto the set, demands to be on the set. I don't think he can keep his mouth shut. Even if Casey told him, Lauren, you need to be quiet or you're gonna be off this set. I think he'd be talking to the director and you know, ah, that's my woman right there. You know him, ah, that's my woman right there. We, you know, make sure, you know, we're together now. Make sure she's not doing anything that's gonna be not appropriate. I don't think Lauren can keep his mouth shut. He'll want to talk to Casey between takes, and eventually, he's going to be asked to leave. Casey's going to finish the scene. She's going to be happy, probably exhausted, probably relieved not to be naked anymore or not to have to worry about people watching her make out with someone and, and pretend that she's having sex. 
Lauren's going to be asking her, why'd you kick me out? I didn't kick you out, Lauren. They asked you to leave because you were being annoying and you were disrupting the shoot. No, they kicked me out because you were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. He will want to screen her roles from that point on if he didn't try to screen them already. Try to get her to quit being an actress so she can stay at home full-time and be a full-time mom to his uh, children that I hope he never has, which he's not going to at this point. He's not even going to have a woman. He will die a virgin. Can you hear Lauren right now? Why can't you do any comedies? You know, comedies be good. Lauren, I'd probably have to kiss somebody because in a comedy there's always like a couple, you know, that's the main deal. Well, you know, maybe you can get a co-star or maybe you can be an extra. I can see it getting to the point where Lauren's going to ask, well, maybe you can get, because you know him, he thinks he's God's gift. Maybe you can get me in the movie, you know? (laughs) You can get me in the movie and I can be your co-star. I mean, we've got, we've got that natural chemistry. You know, he doesn't know the word chemistry. We look good on screen together. Not realizing putting him on screen would be death to a movie. If she really liked Lauren, and I don't think anyone would, let's pretend. If she really liked Lauren, maybe she cuts back the number of roles she takes. Which wouldn't happen. Because the way that it works is once you get a commercial or once you're in a movie and a director likes you or somebody sees it or you have a recognizable face, you're going to start getting more roles. There's a guy I've spoken to a few times. His name is Jeremy Gardner. If you want to see one of his movies that I love, it's called After Midnight. It's a really good movie. Jeremy is an independent actor who has all the skills in the world. He looks good on camera. And that's just proof that it's really difficult to make it. Yes, he's been in a bunch of independent films and has a little bit of clout on that scene. But at the same time, just like my friend Brett Hopkins, You can be in those movies and never get past that level. You'll be working with the same director or directors for the rest of your life. You have to have somebody that notices you. And another issue with that is Lauren thought going to karaoke bars was going to get him noticed. Well, can't you get in local plays or something, Casey? They'll discover you there. Lauren, I don't need to be discovered. I'm already in movies. I'm already do, modeling. Why would I need to go there? Well, you know, maybe the right director. I, I'd be much appreciate. It'd be much appreciated if you did those local films and local local things rather than being on the Hollywood big screen. You're not you. You haven't been you. You haven't been you. God, I love you. Ever since we got together, those movies are interfering in our life. If she worked with the director more than once. Lauren would assume they were having sex. If she worked with an actor more than once, Lauren would assume she was having sex with them. He would say, now, now, you didn't really do anything because, you know, Mickey Rourke and Lisa Bonet, he kind of just went for it. Billy Bob Thornton and Halle Berry, they kind of just went for it on screen to make it real. How do I know you're not doing that? I'm not name dropping or bragging. I'm just telling you these are the people I'm using for a reference. And having seen it firsthand with my daughter, I know that people will kill each other just to get a commercial role. So again, put it, it's all about your resume. Casey's resume, when Lauren first met her, was probably a bunch of teeny weeny independent films and to catch a predator. And if this Casey was real, she's made something of herself. She used those connections to get ahead. And she should be commended for that. That's really difficult. And she also has a loyal following. I'm sure there are a lot of To Catch a Predator people that are just, you know, they put out that hot girl Casey montage. Her entire life would be upside down. Tell you how I became the Prince of Cornville. The Fresh Prince of Cornville. The Pedo Prince of Cornville. A brand new trilogy, Lord of the Trailer. I think Lauren would try to get into her movies. One thing I'm shocked, maybe I missed it. Maybe it happened and they just didn't record it. Lauren is so boring and Blue Boy is trying to edit those in a way that is entertaining to us, which is why I think we're getting it in short bursts, not just to prolong the content, because we all appreciate that. It gives us something, I will appreciate, it gives us something to look forward to. But Lauren is so boring. For every 12 minutes we get, I assume there's, you know, 48 minutes 
that Casey, the person playing Casey, just wanted to gouge their eyeballs out. But I'm surprised that Lauren didn't go, you know, you got connections, you know, maybe you can get me in country. I mean, you know, I can make a lot of money. I guarantee I can make a lot more money than you do acting. <sighs> I wish one day he would realize he's not a good singer, but that will not happen. Because without his singing, as I've said before, he would just be another unrepentant alcoholic pedo if he realized that his one, what he thought was his talent, was not a talent. I don't think Lauren sees acting as a legitimate profession. It's a dream, Lauren. I don't think he sees it as a legitimate profession. Well, you're just pretending. Can't be that hard. Now let's jump to if, well, he would want her isolated in the trailer, obviously. And the only thing she'd be able to do is Rod's auto and auto body and repair commercial locally. And he'd have to be on set for that as well. If he moved to California, it would be even worse because he'd be within striking distance of where she was. He would want to tag along everywhere when she was getting her hair done, when she was getting a manicure and a pedicure, when she went to the spa. He would not want to be separated because Lauren couldn't understand why are we? Why don't you want to be together with me all the time? Because he thinks that's what it is. He wants to go right to marriage. There is no dating. Lorne would not have his own place. He'd be furious that he wasn't moved in with her. And he'd be showing up at her house just like he would with anybody. Now, if I was Casey, and I did care about this guy, but I knew he had a tendency to freak out. You could lay some ground rules, and if Casey was smart, she'd live in an apartment complex with a gate on it, a gated community, where you have to badge in or something to keep him out. I mean, God knows if you have to go that far in a relationship, it's time to move on. I think going everywhere to her auditions, to her auditions, it's all about image. Yeah, acting skill is important, but how do you look on the screen? You come out, you call her in, and you see her sitting next to this 90-year-old looking pedophile. And you're, she's probably thinking to herself, oh God. Who you are with, believe it or not, makes you a package deal in Tinseltown. You don't want to be seen with people who make it look like you're bottom of the barrel. You don't have any clout that's going to tarnish your image. And if Lauren followed her to every single audition, it's going to have a negative impact. Now, I'm not some Hollywood insider, but I told you I have friends, TV, streaming services. I know what they're looking for. I know my place putting together a Hulu Dark, putting together one of those shorts, probably 15, 20 minutes, I know where I am on the food chain. I am not gonna be some Steven Spielberg. I enjoy it. And that's what Casey does. She enjoys what she's doing. And I think Lauren would hate the fact that she enjoyed what she was doing. He would try to take over. He would wanna do whatever he could to make as a country music star if she took him somewhere to a party, God forbid she would ever do that, and he met somebody in the music industry. I was at the Magic Castle for a magic school. Now the guy's name was Bob Markwood. If you don't know that name, he was a pedo, but he hit it very well. He was hitting on me like crazy. He asked people to get in the hot tub, but you gotta get in the hot tub naked. I was out. Well, he got in trouble. And then he got in trouble again. Hard copy, I think it was caught him, Bob the Magician, or it was Inside Edition, caught him and asked him, why are you at a children's party? Bob Markwood, Dom DeLuise made us spaghetti and meatballs. That's the connections that Bob Markwood had. That's not even B-list. We're talking C-list. People were there that had connections, famous magicians. We had a musician come in and tell us what it was like in the music industry and how he created his own identity because it was how to market yourself as a magician. Lauren would see any hey how are you doing as we are best friends now or any woman that said oh nice to meet you he would go home and tell Casey you see all those women hitting on me you better lock me down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Lauren is not a traveler. He's not. He would want to go back to Cornville. He'd be telling her, we need to go back to Cornville. We could live in Cornville, and you could travel all over the world. It's in Maine. There are a lot of opportunities in Maine. Like what? Well, I can't name any, but you ask me three years from now, I'll be able to tell you. And the problem with Lauren is, 
he might invite his brother Roy out. I don't know what their situation is, but I do know Roy makes him feel better. So he'd invite Roy out, maybe. And he would wreck everything. But if Lauren was at a party, he'd be blind drunk, doing a bunch of stupid shit. And I can see in the middle of this party, Lauren telling everybody he can not sing. And finally, they just get sick of it and say, oh, sing us a song, Lauren. And he starts, and Casey has her head down. And Lauren wouldn't be able to tell. I better wrap this up because I'm embarrassing her and everyone else is cringing or they're laughing. They must be telling the private joke because they're not laughing at my singing. Now tell me you wouldn't, you couldn't see him stand up in the middle of one of these power parties and start singing using every opportunity in the world to sing. He would write a poem for the director. I appreciate what you're doing for my girl. I want you to know that acting is her world. I'm just making this shit up. I could see him doing that. I also, the first amount of attention he got from any other woman, I could see him trying to cheat on Casey. I'm not even sure they would have had sex, but we know Lauren would expect sex, because if you're together, I can take you whenever I want. That's what he thinks. There's no scenario where this ends up helping Casey at all. No more hanging out with her friends. No more one-on-one time with any of them. Lauren would want to tag along. And any time she would want to hang out with one of her male friends, that would cause a a knockdown, drag-out fight. It would probably get physical. Casey doesn't seem like the kind of woman who would take that at all. The first time she even saw a little bit of it, she would kick Lauren out. But there's a problem. How would Lauren afford to be able to go back to Cornville? Would he hitchhike? I doubt it. He would be stalking her, probably demanding money. Well, you're the one that brought me out here. Her life would never be the same again because she made the mistake of bringing this guy, this psycho, out to where she works. As long as he was there, she wouldn't get invited places because they knew he was coming along. And part of being friends with a couple is it's a package deal. If you can stomach the significant other of them, you're good. But I had a friend named Jamie. We are not friends anymore because his wife is a fucking psycho bitch. I don't care if you ever listen to this. She was a psycho bitch and she destroyed a lot of people's lives. So those power parties, she'd never go to them. She'd never go anywhere. She would be isolated in California. Isolated in Cornville, Maine is one thing because if you're in Cornville, you're isolated automatically. Isolated in Tinseltown, uh, that would be something that would be hell for anyone who's trying to make it. Lauren would not get a job. What's he going to do? Drive truck? No, he's not going to leave her. Casey is a beautiful woman and Lauren Armstrong would run, want to remedy that. He would want her to not wear makeup only when she's going to the movies and Lauren would have to pick it out. Why does it sound like you're putting on makeup? To cheat on your boyfriend? So in conclusion, frustrated, broken down, a victim of abuse, Lauren would do everything in his power to get that woman who's defeated to come back to Cornville and sit in that chair while he sips beer looking at the sunset from that hobbit hole of a trailer, looking over at her. Casey, you need to stop your bullshit. And if she got pregnant and had kids, Lauren would see that if she's pregnant, she's pretty much going to need him. So I think he would try to keep her pregnant all of the time. It cannot end well. It wouldn't end well. And God forbid any woman choose him as their mate. I just wanted to have a little fun this morning. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.